Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. You're busy. You expect to say no sometimes. But what you didn't expect was a chance to say yes to a college degree while keeping your life. Indiana Tech is now offering Chicago area students undergraduate and graduate degree opportunities taught online by experienced faculty who care. Learn more at one of the new Indiana Tech enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. I can turn this in early? Sure, whenever you're ready. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands-on with the materials that I'm going to be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is, number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're gonna have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're gonna have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes. He transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're gonna to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change, and depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Romary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2, and he's the one of the professors that teaches it, and he just really was a very kind and helpful helpful guy and he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. And I think that and how he did it was all, this is going to be something that's going to stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with. Uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, training system that we have down here in the basement allows us to wire up the panels we have down in the basement to set it up as an off-the-grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial uh, program for me to be in. 
It was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of, the, of my degree, not necessarily the design aspect. It helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, to do a task and some of the uh, boundaries that come with trying to make things more efficient. One of the things that we've been very fortunate here at Indiana Tech is that we've had a grant through AEP to help subsidize our students in taking some of the various trips in spring break. Over the last four years, I have taken, along with a couple of other chaperones, I've taken almost a couple of dozen students to a trip to Germany and Switzerland that focused on renewable energy. Uh, we've gone to Iceland last year, uh, focusing on geothermal energy, and we just recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica. Just last year, I went to Iceland with a couple of, of our peers, not even just energy engineers, but a couple of other uh, engineering majors went along with us. And for me, that was the highlight of my, of my college time. I mean, we learned a lot about like geothermal systems and how they converted to a country of basically like ran just by geothermal. And, but it wasn't just learning about that, it was also learning about their culture as well, you know, and the past and the history and where they plan to go in their future. And all those things combined, I think, really, really kind of defines my experience here in Indiana Tech. You can be the smartest engineer in the world, but if you cannot talk to or work with other engineers and non-engineers, it's very hard to get anything done. I try to teach my students that while you may not like writing, it's going to be a part of the job. You have to communicate if you're doing experiments or uh, testing hardware in the lab. You need to write it up so that other people know what you did and the customer may want to know how, what are the results of that test. Something I would remember most about the faculty would be just the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it and how open they are to hearing your problems and concerns and willing to assist you. Uh, India, Indiana Tech, with the class sizes being so small, you really get that one-on-one -on -one talking, uh, everyday type relationship with your advisors and your professors. And having that is key to success, I feel, because being able to communicate with them and actually get your problems and questions across is going to help clarify things for you while you're in, in classes in school, which is going to set you up for success. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home. Good morning from the Summit City on a cold Sunday afternoon. We are here for a women, NAIA women's lacrosse matchup. The Indiana Tech Warriors taking on the Kaiser Seahawks. We'll step aside momentarily and we'll be right back here for the starting lineups in the National Anthem on Summit City Sports.
complete today's starting lineup. First, for the Disney Seahawks. Number six, Emily Nicole. Number seven, Elena Esteris. Number ten, Louis Cruz. Number eleven, Mackenzie Sivan. Number twelve, Abby Simmons. Number fourteen, Charlie Sagan. Number fifteen, Alexa Cole. Number twenty-two, Chloe Chloe. Number twenty-eight, Maya Francisco. Number thirty-two, Jimmy Parker. Number thirty-eight, Jasmine Kidaway. And a girl, number twenty, Margaret Rowe. Tiger is played by Lauren Sigmar and is by Alexis Martinez. And now for your Indian Assault Warriors. A sophomore defender from Rockwell, Texas, number two, Lexi Green. A sophomore missile from Pottstown, Pennsylvania, number three, Deja Reduster. A freshman midfielder from West Lake, Ohio, number five, Kylie King. A freshman midfielder from Austin, Indiana, number six, Michelle Farrell. A senior defender from Belleville, Illinois, number seven, Felicia Gilmore. A senior defender from Orlando Park, Illinois, number nine, Dave Manningham. A senior midfielder from DeForest, Wisconsin, number ten, Brooke Burr. A junior attacker from Millersville, Maryland, number 12, Noel Rosie. A senior attacker from Haslam, Michigan, number 17, Steve Donnelly. A sophomore defender from Greenfield Hills, Michigan, number 18, Gabby Hitchcock. A freshman attacker from Bristol, Indiana, number 23, Lauren Beanland. And a goal for the Warriors, a junior from Lando Lake, Florida, number 22, Sydney Overdose. The Warriors are coached by Lexi Steve Giovanni and assisted by Amanda Below, Michaela Burden, and Erica Lopez. Those were your starting lineups. The Seahawks coming to us courtesy of Florida. There was some snow during warm-ups, but the sun has since came out, and the, it's going to be a good afternoon for some lacrosse. Indiana Tech coming in 4-2, and two, both losses in the top 10. They are a currently 10th ranked in the country. Kaiser coming into the season 5th ranked have w went 1-3 and three, but have won their last two and looking to come up to the Summit City and upset the Warriors. In goal today Marge w Rowe. She's 3-3 three and three with 50 saves on the season and across the way for the Warriors Sydney Obafor. Starting her 7th game of the season she has, has, has 42 saves with a 1 and 2 record. Still a tad bit breezy outside, 39 degrees here in downtown Fort Wayne. Wind coming out of the northwest at 14 miles an hour should in spurts. The sun certainly making a difference, and we are almost ready to get started at the center circle for the draw. And we are off Sat Sunday afternoon lacrosse here in the Summit City and a little shove there. Ball is on the ground quickly. As Ice Trust picks it up. Moving into the attacking circle behind it is Abby Cannon. Cannon cradles the stick, start, turns around on Obafor. This one hits the turf, and once again, it's going to be picked up by Cannon. India Tech coming off of a loss in a top 10 matchup, struggling in those top 10 matchups so far this season. Looking to pick up wins where they can. Obviously a non-conference matchup. The Seahawks coming to us by way of the Sun Conference. And a long possession to start off today for the Seahawks. 39 seconds left on the shot clock. Over. BB drives in. Sends it low on Obafor who knocks it away and it will remain Seahawk ball. Resets the shot clock to 60 seconds. This one hits the turf.
going to be picked up, moved back out. This is Fru. Fru drives in and sends it over. Oh, before off of her shoulder, bounces around the net, and it still will remain. Cannon again, Indiana Tech yet to have an offense possession. This is Haley Fru. Sends it over. This one gets behind, it's gonna be Foley. Foley driving in, gets the ball taken from her. And picked back up. Over, it's Cannon. Cannon gives it back fully. Fully almost lost it. It's poked away, and the Warriors wind up with it. Deja Rusegers has been dominant so far this season, especially at home. She does have two goals. So far has been a great contributor, however. Faith Donnelly leads the way with... 29 goals on the season on 54 shots. One gets moved in, goes through the crowd, and it will be poked through and winds up in the cage for the Seahawks row. Here comes the Seahawks the other way. This is Jennings. 11.40 to go in the first. It's over, few. Fruit drives in, sends it over a little too high for Cannon. Cannon has 10 goals and 13 assists on the season, looking to get her started. She drives in and decides to step out. This one gets in, all before knocks it down off of the shot from Curtin. And it's going to be picked back up by the Seahawks. Fru has it. It's going to be over Foley. Foley gets it knocked down on the ground. Deja Ruxters goes for it. Couldn't quite get there. And it's picked up by the Warriors. Set the other way and lost by Jade Hamilton. And an infraction call will give the Seahawks the ball right back. Having trouble to retrieve the ball there is Thomas, but eventually does pick it up on the ground. Fru picks it up. Gonna be Urstrez turns around. This one goes low and all before there to pluck it out of the air. Her first save of the afternoon comes at the 10 minute left in the first mark. And looking for the open attacker. And eventually she's gonna find Hamilton. Hamilton gets it over to Brooke Burr. And Burr kicks it over to Donnelly, leading scorer on the team for the Warriors. Now it's Han Lin with it. And back over Deja Rucksters. Burr gets it over. Deja's driving in. This one goes low. Bounces past the goal, giving chase. It still will remain. Warrior ball picked up by Ricky. Donnelly. Gets it back over Burr and... A little too far for Donnelly, and it will be picked up. I sort of why. Ball hit the turf, still winds up with Itrez, anyways. Itrez goes end to end, finds herself in the crease, but kicks it out to Vivi. And another long possession. Looks like it's going to be here for the Seahawks. Third 
35 seconds left on the shot clock as the Seahawks are setting up. They're going to give it BB, drives in, kicks it around the net. And it was knocked out by the Warriors, so it looks like the shot clock will add another 60 seconds to it. And this one goes low, and it's going to remain Seahawks ball as Obafor knocks it away. Abby Cannon comes inbound with the ball. 37 seconds on the shot clock. 7.30 in the This one goes low, and that one will find the back of the net. Haley Frew strikes first for the Seahawks. Goal 11 for Few on the season. And puts Kaiser up 1-0 with 7.25 to go in the first. Seahawks with a one nothing lead on the draw and eventually will be picked up after a little bit of a scrum by Farrell. And Farrell taking it towards the net herself. Farrell fires and scores! <laughs> Farrell gets it right back for the Warriors. We're now knotted up at one. Goal 15 for Farrell on the season. And it only took only about 10 seconds for the Warriors to knot this match back up in the draw circle again. In the air, winds up in the cage of Fru, and she's going to get around Farrell. And another offensive possession here for Madison Andrews. As the Seahawks take, look to take the lead back. This one goes in. Obafor knocks it away. Seahawk ball as it goes, scurries out of bounds. Slowly going in, this one, Obafor in her cage, makes her second save of the day. Lexi Galani came off the bench and has this one, gives it up Gilmore. And Gilmore taking it across midfield and gives it back to Farrell. Farrell left alone, only Swordy to beat, and she's going to go left on Swordy. Farrell fires, and it's another goal, her second of the day. Take a look after she got around to the left, fired it low corner, and just like that, the Warriors have their first lead of the afternoon. Pump it up, a welcome sight for the fans. Welcome sound, that is. Six minutes to go in the first. The Warriors take their first lead. Oh, 
that ball goes sailing and it will wind up into a few stick through stick she's gonna take it a slow offensive start has got both teams cruising all of a sudden and gonna have a stoppage of play as there's a flag See if it's a penalty shot or not. Doesn't look like anybody's going towards the box. Farrell just left the field. She's not sitting in the box area. I'm not sure if that was a substitution. Nonetheless, looks like it will be a penalty shot from Madison Andrews. And here comes Andrews closing in on defenders and goes low on over four and once again we're knotted up at two. Those low shots affecting both goalies today. And off of the penalty shot from Andrews, the Seahawks tie it back up. Only the second goal on the season for Andrews. Comes at a welcome time with 5.42 to go in the first. Knotted up at two. Ball's in the air again. A little bit of a scrum for it. Whistle sounds and it will be Warrior ball. Picked up by Farrell. Gives it in. Faith Donnelly going in. Donnelly goes high and misses the net. Warriors retain possession. That ball hit the turf. It was unable to be handled by Hamlin. Now it's King with it. Donnelly. And her cradle does lose it. Donnelly going to pick it up, and it is a fraught effort momentarily as the Warriors have it again in a chaotic sequence. And Burr gives it up to Deja. So on the ground, got a penalty called for a stoppage of play. I hold. Now it's a penalty shot for the Warriors, going to be taken by Farrell. Farrell's going to elect to pass it off Donnelly, and the whistle sounds again. And it's going to be another penalty shot, just like that. Faith Donnelly's opportunity to take it from the right wing. Donnelly goes in and will be into the cradle of Rowe. Huge stop to keep this game tied for 18 to go in the first, knotted up at two. As a penalty called again. And it will be another penalty shot for Andrews. I believe, see if she can capitalize on this one. Once more, it is Andrews. Andrews gets the whistle, goes low on it, it hits the side of the net, and it will be Seahawk ball still. Scratch that, change it, change and call the Warriors ball. And here comes Deja Ruxters. Substitutions now. The Seahawks electing to get some fresh legs into the game. Bringing back a couple other starters and the Warriors retain possession. 79 seconds left on the shot clock for the Warriors to work with.
King had it, moves it to the back of the net. Burr goes in, a hard collision, a push called. Set Lauren Hanlon to the turf, and it's going to be Hanlon taking the penalty shot now. So here's Hanlon on row. Hanlon has seven goals on the season. Having to make sure everyone's behind the line. Hanlon goes for goal A and spikes it wide. It will be Seahawk ball. Once again, the officials in disagreement. The Warriors will retain possession. Try to get the one-timer for Farrell. Came up short with it, and the ball still on the turf. It will be eventually picked up by the Seahawks. Isturis. Ball bouncing. Does wind up in the cradles for the Seahawks. Crystal Beebe had it before she gave it up to Easer. This is certain moving around the net, gets it over. Ball on the ground winds up with Gilmore before she lost it. Did not reset the shot clock, however. Gilmore did not retain full possession. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. Push, this one goes in. Oh, before Pat gets past her. And Chloe Foley winds up with a goal. 12 on the season now for Foley. And just like that, the Seahawks back in front. Take one more look at this one here. Went with the sidearm to get it around and went low again on Obafor. The celebration commences and the Seahawks gets back in the lead. A back and forth affair so far. Slash called on the Warriors. So about a six second differential game and shot. And looks like another infraction called on the Warriors. 128 to go in the first. Stoppage applied, did not believe that the clock started running. It did not. So I'm under the impression that they're going to restart the possession and let them reset it. And we'll restart. Shot clock is turned off as 
Donnelly's stick goes flying. And Donnelly's gonna get it back. In and out of the stick of Hamilton. Now it's Lauren Hanlon with it, staying just in bounds. And it's gonna give it up. This one's Hamilton. Hamilton going in, goes low with it. Hamilton finds the back of the net. Once again, we're knotted up. As I aforementioned, some of those low shots affecting the goalies here today. Nice cut there by Hanlon, Hamilton, and goes low on it. And 3-3, our score, 46 seconds to go. one's in the air and winds up once again with Farrell. Farrell gets it knocked away as the Warriors look to take the lead before the break and a high stick called. I believe Farrell is going to get charged with it. 30 seconds to go here in the first. Samantha Eth Easter Ether with it. Five seconds to go. She takes a hard spill. It's a penalty called. And a penalty shot coming here. The Seahawks can take the lead as we go into the break with only four seconds to go. See if there'll be a man up. They will be as Gabby Hitchcock goes to the box. Sam Easer. It's Easer on all before before the end of the break and all before knocks it away. That'll be the end of the first quarter and what a way to end it as Sydney Obafor knocks away the penalty shot. And we'll go to the break. Knotted up at three. We'll step aside here. This is Indiana Tech Women's Lacrosse presented by SummerCitySports.com. I think it's really important for freshmen to realize you get out of college what you put into it. If you dedicate yourself to your classes and to your projects and to what you're doing in college, you're going to have a really great experience here. I wish someone would have told me my freshman year that it's important to prioritize, knowing what's important, what's not important, knowing what I need to do opposed to what I want to do. The two things that I think all freshmen should know is uh, buy a parking permit so you don't rack up a bunch of fines and tickets, and also uh, make sure you go to class because it seems like a good idea when you're skipping, but then it's not worth it in the end when you fail the test or don't turn in homework. As an international student, my advice for the freshmen is to not be afraid to make friends because your friends here will end up being your family away from home. Anything that you want to do, anything that you want to put on, anything that you want to showcase on campus, you can. There's always people around to help you do what you want to do here. Make sure that you always take time for yourself to make sure that you're okay. Because college can be very overwhelming as far as like schoolwork and friends and sports and just like everyday life. Always just make sure that you get what you need to get done. It's important to have a relationship with your professors because you you become more personable with them. You start to engage in the material more. They can give you recommendations, especially once you get out of college. You definitely want to put them down as like references. And if you have a better personal relationship, it just makes the whole learning experience go smoothly.
Welcome back. We get ready for the second 3-3. Three, three. The score. Warriors looking to get another huge top 25 win. Before they start conference play, a three-game road trip coming up. But the big one coming up on Wednesday night, they're going to go to the outskirts of Detroit, Michigan to play the first rank Lawrence Tech Blue Devils. What could be a statement win for the Warriors. Get ready for the draw. The Starting off the quarter, a man down. As Hitchcock, as Hitchcock remains in the box, goes right in front of the net. Oh, before guts it high on her, and Carly Curran puts the Seahawks back in front. Ten seconds into this one. Goal number 10 on the season for Carly Curtain. Issue on the draw will result in the Warriors getting possession at midfield. And it's going to be Farrell. And a turnover right away as it's going to be knocked out. Mackenzie Gibbard, the sophomore out of Rochester, New York, comes up with it. Cannon gives it up. Carly Curtain again. Turn around, this one goes uh, low again, and it's Sydney Passaro. The largest lead of the day for either team as Passaro gets her third goal on the season to put the Seahawks up two. Will result in a timeout for the Warriors. We'll step aside and take it with them. We'll be right back here on SummitCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season. Welcome back. Warriors taking a time out after giving up two goals in the first. 40 seconds of the second quarter. 
they do win the draw, however, and here comes Deja Rucksters. Around the net. Gives it up to Hanlon, back over Donnelly. Warriors still getting ready for conference play. Projected to finish third in the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference this season. Going to be Pissarro. Guarding closely. And this right now for the Warriors, it's Burr with it. Donnelly. Turn around, can't find anything. Donnelly getting around and has to bail out as a penalty called. Will result in a penalty shot for Donnelly. Donnelly is the leading scorer for the Warriors. Here comes Donnelly, drives in, tries to go low with it, bounces a little too soon. Keeps the Warriors down too. So far this season, the second period been a problem for the Warriors. They're getting outscored 18 to 21 in the second. Trying to change that here as Galinai has it. Tried to get it right open in front of the net for Hanlon, but was not the case. As the Seahawks get the ball. Ground ball gives up to Alexa Poole. Passara, penalty called as things getting a little hectic. Looks like a ball that was reserved for out of bounds plays did wind up in the field of play. So I had to take a second to adjust that. Hanlon gives it up behind the net. Donnelly moving around the defense. Donnelly absorbs a ton of contact and believes she'll get a penalty shot. Mr. Last One Low, see if she can capitalize here, bring the Warriors back within one. Donnelly going in, goes low, blocked by Rowe. Bro with a huge block keeps the Seahawks up two. Bro looking for a pass. Closely guarded by the Warriors. For Andrews winds up as he loses it. And wide open. They stop play. Brooke Burr would have score. The whistle was sounding beforehand. Couple Warriors with their arms up. Unaware of what their gripe is, what the official was looking to call. Nonetheless, it's all for naught now. As all before has it. Leaves her cage, gets a little bit of contact there from Foley. 22 on 22. 
and able to get Hamilton to have it. Hamilton's trying to dodge through traffic, ball in the air. And the whistle's gonna sound. Stoppage of play as the officials are going to conference. So after all of that, it will be Seahawk ball. Lost momentarily, but was able to retrieve it. Was fully. 10 minutes to go in the first half. None of that, Andrews. Penalty called on the Warriors again, and once again, another penalty shot coming here for the Seahawks as they look to Come on, Come on, Moving in, this one goes low, knocked away by Obafor after the shot from Andrews, and it will be Warrior ball. Oh, before it makes a save, now she's looking to set up the offense and it will be on the ground and winds up with Deja Rucksters. <laughs> Rucksters taking it into the box herself and decides to back off before she can get a shot off. Donnelly. Up around the net, Deja Rucksters. Donnelly going through the lane. Absorbed a lot of contact. See if she gets another penalty shot here. Oh, for her last two on the penalty shots to get another one here. Donnelly hands it off, tries to get it off to Burr. It tried to run a play, but Burr could not handle it. She gets it back. And now Donnelly with another opportunity. Sends it in, good shot, blocked again by Rowe. And she scoops it up. Another huge save for the Seahawks' is Rowe. Came into today with 50 saves. Had a couple good ones on the penalty shots. comes the Seahawks once more as Passaro has it Easter little one timer gives it up full league in the back of the net it's a three goal league now for the Seahawks as the Warriors searching for answers on defense right now A little bit over the head of Obafor once more. And the Seahawks with a three goal lead. With 7.34 to go in the second quarter. Warriors offense. Has picked up a little bit late in quarters. It's kind of been a specialty for them so far this season. But don't want that to be the main cog of your offense. Watch 
on the ground, and that will be Warrior Bull. A little bit too much contact, and back to back, and they're going to have to send the Warriors a man up as they send Cannon to the box and try to green card for a shove. Much to the approval of the Warrior fans to my left. Warriors with a huge opportunity, up a man. As the Seahawks have to send Cannon to the box, 7 10 to go in the first half. Moves in, this one goes. And backing off to the last second, Donnelly with it. Donnelly finds the back of the net, and the Warriors are back on the board. Take a look at this one here. Donnelly gets the pass and goes top shelf with it. And let the dancing begin. Warriors trying to will themselves back into this game. Six fifty-eight to go in the first half. Warriors now down two off of the shot from Donnelly, her second of the day. Ball eventually winds up with the Seahawks. I struts has it. A little spin move trying to get the Seahawks back up three. Lex to send the ball behind the net. On the ground, tie up. They're gonna stop play, see if it will be a penalty shot. They wanna discuss it momentarily. What is she to do? See if this will result in a penalty shot, possibly sending somebody to the box. Warriors are still a man up. And it will be Warrior Ball after the conference. Galini speeding down the field before she gives it up to Hamilton. Hamilton gives it up Donnelly. Donnelly again, and a foul called. See if Donnelly's gonna get another penalty shot, and especially can put this back to a one goal league game. She will. Donnelly gives it up, this one goes, and it will be another flag on the play. A little bit too much contact. This time it will be Noel Ricky who's getting the penalty shot. Ricky tries to pass it off once again to Hanlin. No such luck. Ground ball will result with Deja Ruxters. Faith Donnelly. Ruxters with it again. Going in, Ruxters goes low with it. One goal game. Deja Ruxters grabs her third of the season, goes low on the Seahawks. Just like that, the Warriors have inched back into this one. A 
little bit of a conference here trying to discuss make sure everything is on track Deja Rucksters wins the draw and is going to take it herself. Trying to tie it here. Deja Rucksters going in. Deciding to back out. Loses the ball and picks it back up. Got it knocked away. Still winds up with the Warriors. Burr goes high with it. Rowe knocks it. Donnelly almost had it, but couldn't control it. Ball still on the ground, and it will be picked up by the Seahawks. As Fru has it, it's going to be onside. Picked up here by Colm, the junior, coming off the bench this season. And Colm brings it behind the net. Hanlon. Donnelly. Ruxter's lost it, but it will be a slash. So Deja Ruxter's Believe we'll get a penalty shot to tie this one up. Warriors have passed it off a few times. See if they give Deja Ruxter the greens like they do. We're tied! Three unanswered from the Warriors ties the game. Deja Rucksters with the last two and pump up that score indeed. Three straight. They're loving it. The Warriors love it. Three fifty-six to go. Three unanswered goals from the Warriors. A tie game. Got to wait for the ball to cross the orange line, and it does. Before it's quickly lost, the Warriors had it, and wide open. It's Eistras going in, passes it off, and a little too wide. Obafor coming out of the cage to go and grab it. Doesn't matter anyways, as it will be. Substitution now, as there's, a, I believe, an injury on the field. or Not exactly sure what happened. Going to just see the training staff. Haley Fru, who's coming off, going to the bench. Warriors with the ball back and a little bit too much contact. Winds back up with the Seahawks. Defense! 
Moved in, this one on the ground, goes high within, past Obel for the Seahawks. McKenzie Godbud puts the Seahawks back in front. Snowflakes starting to fall a little bit here once more in the Summit City. Kenzie Goldwood incredibly excited to get that goal. Toss her stick. No penalty for that action. But nonetheless, Seahawks back in front. 2.54 to go. And winds up. The draw goes to set a hitter arm, and it's going to be a penalty called, sending the Warriors a man up. Molina Eistras, the sophomore midfielder, goes to the penalty box. Penalty, Brooke Burr slow to get up off the turf, favoring her back. It's a penalty. The ref is unaware of the ailment. And there it is, there's a green card was given out. And we'll step aside here on SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our cameras. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I decided if I was going to come to Indiana Tech, I was going to be a different kind of instructor. I was really going to focus on connecting with students, teaching the students the theory that they needed, and also the practical applications. Very practically what that looks like is smaller class sizes. So my class sizes are the eight to 10 up to maybe 20. And that's backed up with we have 18 hours of office hours every week. I'm sitting in my office waiting for students to come in to talk about anything. It doesn't just have to be with the classroom. In the College of Engineering, we have ABET accreditation for mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and biomedical engineering. ABET is the top accrediting board for engineering in the United States and probably in the world. Another thing that is a very different approach at Welcome back. Thankfully, Brooke Burr able to walk off on her own power. The Seahawks a man up right now as another hard hit to the turf. Rolling the stick as Cannon, looking to give it off. Snow starting to fall once more in the Summit City. Yeah. 
Andrews. Going in. Andrews gets it back and it goes past before Foley with another goal and just like that the Seahawks are up two. Before having trouble on shots that aren't in the center of her body at the moment but nonetheless, nonetheless it's a goal for Foley. Foley leads the team. She now has 13 goals on the season. And with 140 to go, the Seahawks up two once again. Gets in, it's going to be eventually winding up with the Seahawks. About a five second differential game and shot. Seahawks have led by as much as three. They're up two right now as we get ready for the break. Cutting in here, just couldn't keep it. Moving in, one goes around and on the turf, winds back up with the Warriors temporarily before it's picked up by BB. BB has it, BB driving in, turn around, off the post! Deja Ruxters has it, 45 seconds for the Warriors to cook with. Ruxter's going in. 30 seconds to go in the first half. Deja Ruxter, spin move, goes low, just wide. Winds back up with Maul. Gives it back up. This one into the net of Rowe. And they're going to clear out space. And that'll take us to the break as the buzzer gets to sound. It's a two goal Seahawks lead as we step into the half. Seahawks lead by two. Step aside, this is Indiana Tech Women's Lacrosse presented by SummerCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Tech goes by many names. Business, fine art, forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships, internships, championships, professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. You're busy. You expect to say no sometimes. But what you didn't expect was a chance to say yes to a college degree while keeping your life. Indiana Tech is now offering Chicago area students undergraduate and graduate degree opportunities taught online by experienced faculty who care. Learn more at one of the new Indiana Tech enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. 
I can turn this in early? Sure, whenever you're ready. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands-on with the materials that I'm going to be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is, number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're going to have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're going to have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes. He transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're going to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Romary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2, and he's the one of the professors that teaches it, and he just really was a very kind and helpful helpful guy and he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. And I think that and how he did it was all, this is going to be something that's going to stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with. Uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, training system that we have down here in the basement allows us to wire up the panels we have down in the basement to set it up as an off-the-grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial uh, program for me to be in. It was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of, the, of my degree, not necessarily the design aspect. It helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, to do a task and some of the uh, boundaries that come with trying to make things more efficient. One of the things that we've been very fortunate here at Indiana Tech is that we've had a grant through AEP to help subsidize our students in taking some of the various trips in spring break. Over the last four years, I have taken, along with a couple of other chaperones, I've taken almost a couple of dozen students to a trip to Germany and Switzerland that focused on renewable energy. Uh, we've gone to Iceland last year, uh, focusing on geothermal energy, and we just recently returned from a trip to Costa Rica. Just last year, I went to Iceland with a couple of, of our peers, not even just energy engineers, but a couple of other uh, engineering majors went along with us. And for me, that was the highlight of my of my college time. I mean, we learned a lot about like geothermal systems and how they converted to a country of basically like ran just by geothermal. And but it wasn't just learning about that; it was also learning about their culture as well, you know, and the past and the history and where they plan to go in their future. And all those things combined, I think, really, really kind of defines my experience here in Indiana Tech. You can be the smartest engineer in the world, but if you cannot talk to or work with other engineers and non-engineers, it's very hard to get anything done. I try to teach my students that while you may not like writing, 
it's going to be a part of the job. You have to communicate if you're doing experiments or uh, testing hardware in the lab. You need to write it up so that other people know what you did and the customer may want to know how, what are the results of that test. Something I would remember most about the faculty would be just the one-on-one -on -one aspect of it and how open they are to hearing your problems and concerns and willing to assist you. Uh, Indiana, Indiana Tech, with the class sizes being so small, you really get that one-on-one -on -one talking, uh, everyday type relationship with your advisors and your professors. And having that is key to success, I feel, because being able to communicate with them and actually get your problems and questions across is going to help clarify things for you while you're in, in classes in school, which is going to set you up for success. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. You want to know what's possible at Indiana Tech? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I decided if I was going to come to Indiana Tech, I was going to be a different kind of instructor. I was really going to focus on connecting with students, teaching the students the theory that they needed, and also the practical applications. Very practically what that looks like is smaller class sizes. So my class sizes are the 8 to 10 up to maybe 20. And that's backed up with we have 18 hours of office hours every week. I'm sitting in my office waiting for students to come in to talk about anything. It doesn't just have to be with the classroom. In the College of Engineering, we have ABET accreditation for mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and biomedical engineering. ABET is the top accrediting board for engineering in the United States and probably in the world. Another thing that is a very different approach at Indiana Tech, I think, than some other universities is we try and make sure they have a lot of lab experience in the engineering department. All engineering programs are going to have laboratory courses, but in our laboratory course... Welcome back. Eight, six, your score as we get ready for the final 30 of this one. And it will be Indiana Tech's ball. Oh, 
Any attack moving this one in. Right now, as it stands, Chloe Foley has three goals leading the team, and then Frew, Gibbard, Kristen Passaro, and Andrews all have one goal for the Seahawks, and then seven saves on six goals allowed for Rowe as Indiana Tech will lose the ball here. For the Warriors, seven saves on eight goals allowed for Obafor. And in terms of goals, Deja Rucksters has a hat trick. Farrell with two and Donnelly with one. Warriors were down 3-6 in the middle of the second for charging back with three unanswered, but quickly two unanswered from the Seahawks, putting us where we're at in current time. Ground ball quickly scooped up. Yellow card given out. I think it's a bench warning. Looking to see who's open. now the Warriors looking to take their first lead since it was two to one <laughs> having a lot of work to do around the net Donnelly going for a second goal today pass it off Burr Burr misses it but a good sight to see the Brooke Burr back on the field, left in the middle of the second, favoring her back, but is back in this game. I said it once, I've said it a million times, sometimes that turf can just be unforgiven. Deja Ruxter is going for the ground ball, tried to stay in bounds, was pushed. And here comes Deja Ruxter's just dancing on that line, but she does step on it. Move back. Moving around now. Goes down low. Obafor there to knock it down with her net. Ten fifty to go here in the third. M moves it around. Back out here, Donnelly cutting. Brooke Burr, a little too high, but Brooke actually does find the top corner. Looked like somebody grabbed it behind the net. Nonetheless, Brooke Burr comes into the second and puts it back to a one-goal game. 
Sometimes that ball a little difficult to track. Nonetheless, Brooke Burr finding the back of the top corner. And the music plays again. A huge draw as the Warriors look to win another draw. 10.42 to go here in the third. Right, it's on the ground and eventually picked up by the Seahawks. It was McCall who had a trouble handling that one. McCall. This one gets in and it'll be a foul called. I believe a high stick. And a penalty shot coming here for Abby Cannon. Cannon already has a goal on the day. Has a chance to make this once more a two goal game. Little pass off and it'll be on the ground and Deja Ruxers comes up with that one. Indiana Tech read it perfectly. Here comes Deja Ruxers charging down the field. Little spin move for trying to get into her zone. And passes it off. Moving in here, Donnelly looking for a, her second goal of the day. Donnelly spin move, gives it up. This one down low, goes down low, and we're tied again! Oh, another goal from the Warriors, they answer back. Brooke Maul, the sophomore, finds it. How about that? Some bench presses from the bench, doing all the creative stuff so far. Second look at this one. How about that excitement from Brooke Mall? A huge goal. Her first of the season as well. And much needed one gets the thumbs up. Big smile on her face. You love to see that. And. The Warriors love to see it, and you can see they're pumped up. We're tied up, back again at eight. The seesaw continues. Fifteen to go here. Seahawks ending yet to score yet this quarter. Lines back up with McCall. McCall has it, gives it up, BB. McCall. Penalty called. Hit her arm. Gilmore seems to disagree with the call, but a penalty shot coming here for McCall.
McCall four goals on the season. Drives in, make it five. Another huge goal. For McCall, her fifth of the season, as I've said. Squid in here and went top shelf over O before. Eight twenty two to go in the third and it has been a marathon of a game. Still got eighteen minutes to go. See what the Seahawks can do once again with the lead. It's been a tug of war all day. This one's in the air, knocked down, and winds up, and a huge shove there. And Burr's on the ground. They're not going to call anything. Burr took a huge spill. She's looking for something, and nothing's going to come. Easer. Deciding to play a little bit of game of pass here fully. We'll drive in. <laughs> fully underhand pass behind the net. 29 seconds to go on the shot clock. This one goes in, Obafor can't knock it away, and it will be Warrior Ball regardless. Quickly turned right back over though, McCall has it, directing traffic. Foley. Spin move, driving in, that one hits the post and goes in. Mila Eistrath puts the Seahawks back up too. Take a look here on the replay. Went low with, with it. If they elect to uh, let Obafor finish this game, they will. The Warriors will take a timeout. 6:38. They're down two. We'll step aside. This is Indiana Tech Women's Lacrosse, presented by SomersCitySports.com. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration 
captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies, and it's just really important to get involved on campus. We have intramurals. Welcome back. The Warriors taking their first time out of the half down two. As it seems they just cannot get over the hump right now. And a huge draw won by Burr. Burr looking for a pass, selecting to take it herself. Deja Rooksters. Donnelly spin move left alone. Donnelly finds the back of the net out of the timeout. Donnelly picks up her second. And the Warriors trying to cook again. Donnelly with a huge spin move here on the replay. Able to go low for that one and get it back on the net. Once again, the Warriors bring it back within one. Six oh eight to go here in the third. Brooke Burr hits the turf again and is slow to get up, able to go grab her stick, see if she gets subbed out. And yeah, they're going to conference. See if anybody has to go to the box. Red card given out. That's going to send fully. <laughs> Rucksters has it, bringing it into her zone. Warriors have not led since it was two to one. If this is, there's been two ties and two lead changes. This one moved in and a, another foul called. And a penalty shot to tie it. Farrell scored the first two for the Warriors. Farrell goes in and it's knocked away. What a day from Rowe, but it's going to be picked up by Burr as it's quickly turned back over. Donnelly has it. Donnelly sticks in the air, flag is on the field, hitting her arm. So I think Donnelly will have a chance to tie it. That is the case. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
A little bit of confusion with a substitution or a penalty poss possibly. Nonetheless, it's Donnelly to tie the game. Would be the third tie this afternoon. And they're going to conference once more. Looks like the uh, Seahawks had a, someone off sides. Here Donnelly is electing just to come out, uh, not electing to take the shot and comes out of the crease. Rucksters goes in, Deja Rucksters, another whistle. Now it's Deja Rucksters turn to try to tie the game. Already with three goals this afternoon. Deja Ruxer is on the penalty shot. Going in, goes low with it, blocked away! Gonna stop play here and the Warriors fans unhappy with what is taking place on the field. Moving in, and that one knocked away again. Huge day in net. Francisco gives it up off of the body of Poole, was able to keep it, 3.45 to go. And pushed out of bounds. We're gonna call her back. She's trying to argue the call. See if she gets a card for this. She will, it's a green card given out. She has to go to the penalty box. This one gets around. On hit the turf pretty hard after Cannon gets it. It was knocked out. This one's gonna be over BB. 318 to go. BB finds an open. Oh before right in her net. Just out of the stick of Farrell, able to keep it alive. And goes back out to Burr. Rucksters. Rucksters is a huge collision. They're gonna call the penalty on that as a hard collision by Joseph. They're gonna conference about this. This has been a a game that has certainly started to become contentious over here in the stands. <laughs> See if they're going to a penalty. No call apparently. So Deja Ruxers does get the ball. 
behind the net. Just out of the stick of Maul, who got her first goal early, uh, for the season earlier in the day. Now it's Donnelly with it. Donnelly over to Maul, looking for her second. And goes behind the net. 67 seconds remaining on the shot clock. And Donnelly loses it on the ground, picked up by Tomlinson. This will be picked up by Maul, and it will remain Warrior Ball as Maul was contacted in the arm. Move back, Donnelly catches it, and once again, Donnelly contacted in her, on her arm. Here's a penalty shot, knocked away into the cage of Rucksters. 1.30 to go here in the third. Rucksters driving in, Rucksters gets it knocked away. Another incredible save by Rowe. Then Burr on the one-timer takes contact in the lane, but Rowe there as the whistle sounds. It was the quarter was nowhere close to being over, but I think there was a timeout call. Perhaps looks that way. Timeout call on the field with under a minute to go. We'll step aside. Seahawks lead by one. This is Indiana Tech women's lacrosse presented by Summit City Sports. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the 260s, dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our cameras. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I decided if I was going to come to Indiana Tech, I was going to be a different kind of instructor. I was really going to focus on connecting with students, teaching the students the theory that they needed, and also the practical applications. Very practically what that looks like is smaller class sizes. So my class sizes are the 8 to 10 up to maybe 20. And that's backed up with we have 18 hours of office hours every week. I'm sitting in my office waiting for students to come in to talk about anything. It doesn't just have to be with the classroom. In the College of Engineering, we have ABET accreditation for mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and biomedical engineering. ABET is the top accrediting board for engineering in the United States and probably in the world. Another thing that is a very different approach at Indiana Tech, I think, than some other universities is we try and make sure they have a lot of... Well, welcome back. The snow really starting to come down now. Imagine the Seahawks are missing that South Florida weather right about now. Might have to, might have to sit on the bus and join them. <laughs> Anyways, 40 seconds to go. Here as the Seahawks try to draw up a play to bring themselves back up two as we go into the fourth. And they're gonna stop play once more for unknown reasons at the moment. Brooke Burr is going I believe oh, there's going to be a penalty. It's not on Brooke Burr. I thought she was heading towards the penalty box, but she was not. It's going to be Kylie King going to the penalty box. So with 20 seconds to go, the Seahawks are going to go up a man.
Going in, turn around, one timer, over four, knocks it down, the net's open, but the ball goes sailing away. Five seconds, goes down low, Obafor knocks it away, and the Seahawks aren't gonna get anything off as they, the Warrior defense holds firm. We'll step aside, we'll go to the fourth quarter here with the Seahawks up one. Wanna know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, Nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. From the first day, I felt very welcome at Indiana Tech. I just really enjoy the classes and the vibe I get from all the other athletes and just the students here. Everybody's cool and everybody gets along really well. I'm currently a senior and since my freshman year, student life activities have really grown throughout campus and there are so many ways that you can meet new people. You can go bowling, you can watch movies, and it's just really important to get involved on campus. You have intramurals, anything from billiards to basketball. It's made student life very enjoyable. I love Fort Wayne because there's always something going on like festivals, I walk a bunch of the trails here locally, there's great restaurants, there's always something fun to do. You can never be bored here in Fort Wayne. The school spirit at Indiana Tech is epic. It's everything. We had our first annual hockey game not too long ago. Everybody showed up, face paint, cowbells, Trojan hats, lawn gnomes. It was amazing. It makes it so worthwhile to be a warrior. Go Warriors. One more quarter to go here at Warrior Athletic Fields. Seahawks lead by a goal. It's been back and forth all day. 9-10, your score. Moving in, this one goes through and Obafor knocks it away. And there was a collision in near the crease and a green card called. And that one will be on the Seahawks. Samantha e Easter going to the box. Warriors now up a man. Coming up for the Warriors, three straight road games, like one against Lawrence Tech, that'll be on the 21st at noon, then Concordia on the road, then they will have a conference matchup in Indiana at Bethel for home games against Marion, Rochester, Aquinas, and Siena Heights for closing their season out on the 13th at Madonna. <laughs> Whack play starting to get started. Donnelly finds the back of the net, and once again, we are tied. Faith Donnelly always there for her team. The leading scorer. Nantech yeah, Tech trying to row their way to a win here today. Thank you. 
Faith Donnelly with three goals on the afternoon now. A hat trick for her. It's going to be another huge draw here. And goes in the air. And it will be won by the Warriors. Electing to retreat is going to be King. And it will be a stoppage of play. Looks like it's going to be another green card given out. Once again, it will be the Warriors a man up as they look to take their first lead since the first quarter. It's Burr trying to do that and contacted her arm once more. It's gonna be Burr for the lead here with 13.55 to go in the fourth. Burr with defenders all around, closing in. Burr is rejected. On the ground, picked up quickly. A little bit of trouble so far for some of these teams and a little bit of contact. It will be still Warrior Ball. Donnelly has it. Moved out here, it's gonna be Burr again. This one goes in danger, Rucksters misses the net. Warriors still have it, 45 seconds to go on the shot clock. Moved out, Donnelly backs up. This one gets out, it's gonna be top down, off the bar, the second goal of the day for Brooke Mall. Puts the Warriors in front for the first time since the first quarter. How about that? A slow second half for Kaiser. Unless it's Maul with it. Gets approval from the crowd. in the air and it's going to wind up making an in-game substitution is the Seahawks just a couple defenders for each other nothing's going to affect the play but Warriors have only led by as much as one today they'll look to take a two goal lead here as once again they have picked it up late in the third into the fourth it's kind of been their MO so far this season
Moved in here, Deja Rucksters is contacted on her arm. Rucksters to give Indiana Tech their largest lead of the day. Rucksters goes in and knocked it away and it will be Warrior Ball. This one gets in and it finds the back of the net again. It's a two goal Warrior lead. After Farrell does it again. How about this? Warriors with a huge comeback, 11.20 to go. Take a two goal lead. We'll see if the Seahawks want to use one of those timeouts. And there it is. Yeah, just as I was saying it, the ref was talking to her and she's going to elect to use it. We'll step aside once more. The Warriors have come back. They're up two. We'll be right back on SummitStateSports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260s, dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I decided if I was going to come to Indiana Tech, I was going to be a different kind of instructor. I was really going to focus on connecting with students, teaching the students the theory that they needed, and also the practical applications. Very practically what that looks like is smaller class sizes. So my class sizes are the eight to 10 up to maybe 20. And that's backed up with we have 18 hours of office hours every week. I'm sitting in my office waiting for students to come in to talk about anything. It doesn't just have to be with the classroom. In the College of Engineering, we have ABET accreditation for mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and biomedical engineering. ABET is the top accrediting board for engineering in the United States and probably in the world. Another thing that is a very different approach at Indiana Tech, I think, than some other universities is we try and make sure they have a lot of lab experience in the engineering department. All engineering programs are going to have laboratory courses. Welcome back. The Seahawks electing to take a timeout, 11.20 to go as they face their largest deficit of the day. Their scoring has gone a little bit cold, but Deja Ruxter is there to win the draw. Let's see if the Warriors can start pulling away in this one. Moved in, Donnelly turns around. Donnelly looking to make it a three gold game before she gets the ground ball, which winds back up with the Seahawks. Seahawks look, facing a two gold deficit for the first time today. And here they come the other way. Moved in and elected, got the fake pass. And all before there to pluck it out of the air. Hard collision and it will be Warrior Ball and none too happy about it are the Seahawks. They're gonna, Coley Foley was on the ground incredibly upset about what had transpired. Uh. 
hopefully talking to the official, see if they send anybody to the box or anything, or give a green card out. Official has his green card in his hand, and they are going to give the Warriors a penalty. After all of that, the conference results in the Warriors being a man down and Foley has it. I'm aware of what they decide to call there, but that is the, those are the rules. Moved around. This is a big opportunity for the Seahawks. One timer goes high. Oh, before tried to knock it down, but she couldn't do it. There is somebody on the ground for the Warriors. Will the goal count? No goal. No goal is called. And it's a yellow card given out. And how about that for Irony Foley, the one who's going to have to go to the box. Believe it. No apologies, it's actually going to be Easter who's going to the box. So the goal is does not count. Let's see if they decide to talk about it here. No, no conference. They're going to let him play on. There was a warrior down after the ball went into the net. Goal is disallowed. 9.44 to go. Donnelly facing a lot of contact on the ground. This game getting physical fast. 9.20. Up and it will be Seahawk ball. Ball on the ground again. Deja Rucksters with it. Asia Rucksters gives it back up. Maul going for the hat trick. Move in here and Burr had it. Given up. Burr with the penalty shot. Has a chance to make it a three goal game. Burr going in, electing out to pass it, and a flag called as Burr hit the turf hard. Warriors will retain possession. Moved in here and it will be saved by Rowe. It's one all, it's gonna be out of bounds and it will be Warrior Ball. Warriors have a chance to control the pace right now is that the defense has really been given the half off. That timeout they took in the middle of the third has changed everything. They're going all the way to the sidelines so they can get coached here. As the Warriors, they... I have not led by three. Rowe knocks down another one. And now it's just up to the Seahawks to get on offense. Donnelly knocks it out. And 
It's going to be given up. Meets a double team and kicks it out. And it's kicked out to Swati. Pissarro. going to be Chloe Foley to set up the offense. 30 seconds to go on the shot clock as Ice Trust has it. Take a spill, Ruxers knocks it away, and Deja Ruxers has it, and it's coming up all the way past midfield on her lonesome. Lost and just going out of bounds. A huge missed opportunity there. Kaiser's bench hopping up and down. And Rowe has it. Moving towards the line, and she stepped out. Oh, just out of the stick of Ruxters, left the pass from Colum. Once again, it goes out of bounds. Seahawks, another opportunity here. The second half going a little bit fast. This fourth quarter going a little bit faster than that third did. The pace of play is picked up. But the hypothetical hourglass slowly running out for the Seahawks. Lost it. And Donnelly will be charged with a foul. And Donnelly has to go to the penalty box. So with 4.25 to go in the fourth, the gives up in a hard collision. And it looks like they're gonna send her to the box too, they are. So now a, a two-man advantage for Kaiser. <laughs> Moving behind the net, 4-10 to go. Move towards, it's going to the net. Goes away and it's going to be picked up by Gibbled. Here's a wide open look, it goes past Obafor. It's a one goal game. Sydney Passaro picks up her second. Three forty-six to go. Now it's going to be an opportunity. It's 
They're waiting for Donnelly to come out of the box as well. Would be. Here they come, yep. Donnelly comes out of the box. Deja Rucksters has it. What a ginormous draw win. Brooke Mall with it. And they're going to stop play. For what I'm unaware of. Deja Rucksters has the ball and gives it up to Brooke Burr. And now Burr has it back. Whole minute left on the shot clock. The Warriors contempt to let the clock slowly drip away. That's Rucksters. Thanks out the defense, Deja Rucksters. Donnelly. Has it it's on the ground. And picked up. 2.25 to go off of a huge turnover from the Warriors. And it's going to be Ice Trust with it. Across midfield. Winds up with Kurt Certain. Coming in all the way behind the net. It's. Gibbard on the ground, ground ball, battle for it. The no one's winding up with it. Seahawks ball. Timeout, Seahawks. High drama here in the Summit City with 1.54 to go. The Seahawks trail by a goal. Don't go anywhere. We'll step aside. We'll be right back here on Summit City Sports Talk. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Want to know what it means to be a warrior? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and walk a mile in a warrior's shoes. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our cameras. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, Nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Welcome back. High drama with 1.54 to go. The Seahawks have the ball, and they're looking to tie the game. Whoever wins the draw, depending on the length of this possession, if the Seahawks score, should have the ball to end the game. Spin move, tough defense, goes in and passed all the four, and the Seahawks have come all the way back. (laughs) 
that'll the shot clock is off so the huge draw win here will be crucial but it's going to be a timeout for the Warriors now as the mood has completely flipped in this stadium once again we'll step aside a minute 27 to go kind of running out for both teams Welcome to the Summit City home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans each victory and celebration captured by our camera Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I decided if I was going to come to Indiana Tech, I was going to be a different kind of instructor. I was really going to focus on connecting with students teaching the students the theory that they needed and also the practical applications. Very practically what that looks like is smaller class sizes. So my class sizes are the 8 to 10 up to maybe 20. And that's backed up with we have 18 hours of office hours every week. I'm sitting in my office waiting for students to come in to talk about anything. It doesn't just have to be with the classroom. In the College of Engineering, we have ABET accreditation for mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and biomedical engineering. ABET is the top accrediting board for engineering in the United States and probably in the world. Another thing that is a very different approach at Indiana Tech, I think, than some other universities is we try and make sure they have a lot of lab experience in the engineering department. All engineering programs are going to have laboratory courses, but in our laboratory courses we try to get them not just exposure to measurements and exposure to... Welcome back. 127 to go. We're knotted up at 12, and you cannot stress the importance of this draw. One's on the ground, and it will be... <laughs> Warriors get the ball for... Don't know why, but the Warriors have the ball. I think the fans will take it. Brooke Burr with it now. 1.15 to go, and the Warriors can hold for the last shot. Farrell, under a minute to go. Back over Burr, gives it over Deja Rucksters. Rucksters, spin move, picks up a double team. Rucksters goes in, whistle sounds. Will it be a penalty shot? I believe it will be. It will be. Officials are going to conference, going to send one of the Seahawks away. And I guess it won't be a penalty shot after all. Snow starting to fall again. It's fallen periodically today. About 30 seconds to go. The yellow ball, the only thing that matters. Ruxters defend with several defenders around her. Can't find an open lane. Ruxters beats the defense regardless and scores the goal! Highlight real play with 19 seconds to go from Deja Ruxters! Can you believe it? The bench ecstatic Deja Rucksters of Magician. 
take a look at this one on the replay. Rucksters picking up defenders everywhere she wants. Spun out of it, went low with it, and scored the goal. A ma magical act from Deja Rucksters to put the Warriors up. The emotional leader of this team comes in when they needed him in this top 25 matchup. This draw is huge. Once again, it seems like every draw in this fourth has been consequential, and it will be Seahawk ball. They have 18 seconds. 17 seconds to go now. It's gonna be McCall. McCall with it, coming down the way. Goes around the defender, little poke, and goes in towards the net. Little showed off, gets it over to Obamor, it's not the way, Deja Rucksters has it, and the Warriors do it! They upset the Seahawks! Utter jubilation here at Indiana Tech as Deja Rucksters scores the game-winning goal! What a day of lacrosse as Deja Rucksters the hero for the Warriors today off of this incredible goal. Obviously the player of the game for us com coming up clutch when it matters most. That'll be your final. The Warriors on the road for a couple weeks. 13-12 the final. Thank you so much for joining us. Carson Wagons, Jeff Mahoney man in the camera for you today. We'll see you next time on Indiana Tech Lacrosse. Want to know the difference between dreaming and doing? Yeah, pretty much everything. Visit Indiana Tech and see what it's like to be a warrior. Tech goes by many names. Business. Fine art. Forensic science. Some think it's just technical. But really, tech means everything. Scholarships. Internships. Championships. It's professors who make time for you one-on-one. -on -one. It's putting everything on the line. It can be fierce. It can be fascinating. It can be awesome. Most important, it's believing in yourself and what you have to offer the world. Because at Indiana Tech, warriors are prepared to lead a significant life. You're busy. You expect to say no sometimes. But what you didn't expect was a chance to say yes to a college degree while keeping your life. Indiana Tech is now offering Chicago area students undergraduate and graduate degree opportunities taught online by experienced faculty who care. Learn more at one of the new Indiana Tech enrollment centers in Naperville or Wilmette. I can turn this in early? Sure, whenever you're ready. Embrace the unexpected at Indiana Tech. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there aren't very many energy programs out there. When I researched all of the various programs recently, there are really only two or three accredited engineering programs. I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada originally. I came out here to Indiana Tech uh, to actually go for the energy engineering program because of its uniqueness and its ability to get hands-on with the materials that I'm going to be using in the future. Well, a few of the things I think that sets Indiana Tech apart is, number one, you have very small classes. Uh, you have very close relationships with your professors. When you have a class of 10 people, 
it's much easier to get to know the professor and get in contact with him than if you have a class of 30, 40, or 50. You're going to have the same professors for the majority of your classes. You're going to have the same classmates for the majority of your classes. The more practical applications come in all the subsequent energy engineering classes. Heat transfers in a class that right after they're leaving the classroom and the board is filled with calculus. So in order to understand a lot of these topics, they're going to need to understand the calculus there. Calculus is the study of the, the rate of change, how fast things change. And depending upon whether it's energy engineering, industrial engineering, or whatever, they're going to need to use that and apply that. Professor Romary, um, he stands out to me the most right now because when I first got here, I had to take calculus, Calc 1, Calc 2 and he's the, one of the professors that teaches it. And he just really was a very kind and helpful, helpful guy. And he did whatever he could to help us out. He was very funny, always had a way of creatively teaching calculus to us that not a whole lot of people can do. And I think that and how he did it was all, this is gonna be something that's gonna stick for me for a very long time. The field work that Indiana Tech can provide here is, for example, we have a 10 kilowatt windmill that the students can work with. Uh, we have a geothermal system uh, for a couple of the buildings for Yuteng Su and for Zollner uh, that uses geothermal principles to heat and cool the buildings in the summer and the winter. The PV array system, training system that we have down here in the basement allows us to wire up the panels we have down the basement to set it up as a off-the-grid system or a battery bank system, which helps us because we can see every component of the system actually intertwining and how they work together with something that may not be easily visible when you're on the job site in, in a career. So definitely my uh, internship at Super Value Incorporated uh, was a very, very beneficial uh, program for me to be in. It was more based on the process and logistical side of engineering of, the, of my degree, not necessarily the design aspect. It helped me really learn how the most efficient way to do a, to do a task and some of the 